Bitcoin price rising with the introduction of capital controls in China. Well, that was totally predictable. Uh, China is the greatest uh, area for Bitcoin trading. It's got the biggest exchange volume. And, you know, Bitcoin price is looking really good right now. Right, so at this time, China becomes the epicenter of Bitcoin space with the concentration of miners and they have the cheap energy. And you also have states like New York State attempting to attract some business by introducing some legislation like the Bit License Program to attract business. China introduces capital controls. And here is the um, offshore yuan rising. And green is the Bitcoin price rising. So you see Bitcoin price rising with the introduction of capital controls in China. Well, that was totally predictable. Uh, China is the greatest uh, area for Bitcoin trading. It's got the biggest exchange volume. And, you know, Bitcoin price is looking really good right now. We've worked through the overhang of the Mt. Gox scandal. We've got uh, a price now that's broken out of a, a year trend of a kind of a choppy up and down trend, a, a channel that's not broken above that. And uh, you've got around the world people have re realized that having a private blockchain like they're doing at some of these banks is not the same thing as having Bitcoin. Bitcoin is decentralized, anonymous, whereas these private blockchains like Citicoin and other coins developed by the banks are, don't fit the bill. So now people are coming back to the, to the godmama of the crypto space, Bitcoin. So it's, uh, the price is starting to pick up again. We're gonna start to see some good price action. And the feeling is that this is the time for China to now step out and put to rest this idea of censoring their global trade right. with the U.S. censoring SWIFT and other things that they do to curtail China and other countries because China's making their big move, the big move for the 21st century. They're going to pull the trap door. And let me just add that they're also, as has been reported by the media, rolling out a cryptocurrency. Uh, a lot of the details have not been divulged. I can tell you that that cryptocurrency China's rolling out will be backed by gold. It's a two-prong uh, two announcement. Number one, okay. China's got 20,000 tons of gold. Number two, we're rolling out a crypto coin backed by gold, and the dollar is toast. The dollar's going like every other paper money in history to zero. And you say, where's gold going? Is it going to 5,000 to 10,000? It doesn't matter. In, go in dollar terms, gold is going to infinity. In dollar terms, Bitcoin is going to infinity because the dollar is going to zero, like every piece of garbage fiat money before it. While China is dominating in the actual accumulation of Bitcoin at this point in time, and they are definitely dominating the chip space, which is very important to mining, and miners are very important to Bitcoin. They're driving up the hash rate because they're all engaging in an arms race, this ASICs arms race going on in China. Uh, Bitmain is accumulating power and Bitcoin. They're, by the way, they're not selling, all those miners are not selling their Bitcoin. Unlike all the miners in Eastern Europe or America who are having to pay their electric bills, there are no electric bills for China. In the meantime, in the U.S., there is more of this normalization of Bitcoin. And 2015 is really the attempt by many participants in Bitcoin to kind of agree with the banks, try to get Goldman Sachs, try to get JP Morgan on side, try to participate in R3, this consortium of blockchain, not Bitcoin. And we have in New York the Bit License. June 2015, the final draft of Bit License in New York is published. Soon after publishing this final draft of the new bit license law in New York, which would ultimately drive all the Bitcoin industry out of New York, Ben Lossky, who wrote this law, then joins a cryptocurrency firm. So here we have this like attempt to be the first. You remember at the time it was bit license is going to bring all Bitcoin industries here and we're going to make it blockchain, not Bitcoin, and it's going to be legitimate and it's going to be blessed by the Wall Street regulators. This is Wall Street, the New York Department of, of Financial Services thinks that they're going to make Bitcoin, this blockchain, not Bitcoin, they're gonna host it all in New York City. Right, so at this time, China becomes the epicenter of Bitcoin space with the concentration of miners and they have the cheap energy. And you also have states like New York State attempting to attract some business by introducing some legislation like the Bit License Program to attract businesses. But more importantly, around the world, different jurisdictions, different countries decided, oh, you know what, we heard this is the second coming of the internet.
and we kind of missed the internet. And that turned out to be a multi-trillion dollar industry, made a lot of people tons of money. If this is the next internet, you know, we want to be the focus of that next wave of innovation and capital formulation. So they started to reach out to the industry. So places like Malta, places like Isle of Man, places like Singapore, they all entered the space and said, come here, we'll take your entrepreneurs, we'll take the business. And so one of the promises of Bitcoin is that instead of the central authorities coming around and seizing money from individuals whenever they go bust, that central authorities would come and asking folks for money to bail them out. And if all the money is in Bitcoin, it's in crypto, and fiat money is becoming increasingly worthless, then you saw the first hints of that in 2015 when all these states started to uh, try to bring that business to them because they, they could kind of sense the future where fiat money would not be a bargaining chip anymore. You couldn't buy anything with fiat money. You couldn't buy influence. You couldn't buy politicians. You couldn't buy your way out of a financial crisis. The people with the hard money were the people you needed to satisfy. And those people are the people with Bitcoin. So with the enthusiasm we've been seeing in Bitcoin these past few, do you attribute it to the news we're seeing coming out of China? Yes, and the repo market. In other words, adoption for Bitcoin has been driven by bank failure. We saw it in Cyprus when they did a massive bail-in. It zoomed past 1,000. Uh, we saw it during uh, 2008 crisis when they gave birth to Bitcoin. The protocol is in defiance of the global banking establishment. This is why Bitcoin was created, to do battle with the central banks. As Saifdeen Amous writes eloquently in his genius book, The Bitcoin Standard, is this is a new version of Bitcoin-based banking that will put all the other central banks out of business. Bitcoin could be the new currency for global trade. Citibank says, of course, that's Dorian Nakamoto. And this is the much talked about report out of Citibank that many um, academic economists were uh, very upset with. But basically what Citibank is saying, and they're one of the biggest recipients of bailouts in American history <laughs> and part of this financial system whereby, um, you know, China's eating their lunch and payment system because the likes of Citibank never bothered to uh, get out of bed. They wouldn't get out of bed for $10,000. You know, they, they can't be bothered to come up with any innovations. Well, they, in a report entitled Bitcoin at the Tipping Point, it charts the evolution of Bitcoin from a form of payment to its current status as the store of value. The authors forecast that Bitcoin's core properties combined with its global reach and neutrality could see it morph into the currency of choice for international trade in around seven years. It's happening right now because the transaction is the settlement. So you don't need Citibank. It obviates Citibank. It makes Citibank redundant, as are all banks, redundant with Bitcoin. I can trade with you as a currency, and it uh, doesn't require any bank, doesn't require a central bank. And th they got a little bit reversed. They're saying it started off as a means of payment, and people are looking at it as a store of value. But in fact, it started off as a store of value, and now it's morphing into a means of payment. That's the whole history of money. So Citibank should know at least the history of money and how money comes into existence. But nevertheless, a good effort, and I applaud them for at least recognizing that they're about to go out of business. It's like, you know, Walmart gets the government to pay their employees, right? Walmart doesn't pay their employees. The government pays Walmart's employees so that the people at Walmart who run Walmart can take more money for themselves. So now what's going on here is that these tech companies want the American taxpayer to go fund some AI, some artificial intelligence for them. They don't want to spend the money on the AI themselves because they want to keep it. Uh, for their stock bonuses. They don't want to do any actual work. They just want the transfer payments from the Fed, put it in their pockets. And then if there's a complaint about, oh, China's leading in AI, they're like, well, go talk to the taxpayer. We're just company, we're just corporations. We don't know how to do anything anymore.